The following video demonstrates the surgical procedure for all Toman medical implants with a platform diameter from 3.5 to 6 millimeters. Toman Medical offers two different implant lines, parallel walled SPI element implants for universal use and conical cylindrical SPI contact implants for placement in extraction sockets and for special anatomical situations. The implants are defined by their platform size, which refers to the implant abutment connection. Each platform diameter is color-coded and therefore easily identifiable. The indicated collar height refers to the height of the machined part of the implant. Element implants are offered with a minimized collar, MC, a regular collar, RC, and a long collar, LC, while contact implants are offered with a minimized and a regular collar. Other specifications include the shoulder, which refers to the coronal level of the implant, the endosseous length, the endosseous diameter, and the core diameter, which correlates to the diameter of the drill hole. All Tolman Medical implants are available with the superhydrophilic NSL surface, which is the conditioned state of the standard sandblasted and thermal acid etched surface. All crucial specifications are printed on the outer packaging of the implant, including the platform-specific color. For the success of implant-supported tooth restoration, a carefully conducted treatment plan is of utmost importance. The essentials for a successful treatment plan include the gathering of patient information, comprehensive preoperative diagnostics, and the creation of optimal bone and soft tissue conditions. X-ray images and CBCT or CT-based planning can aid with the selection of the ideal implant diameter, positioning, and length. Toman Medical provides X-ray templates and both implant lines are included in the most common surgery planning systems. While planning, it should be considered that the implant shoulder at bone level needs to be positioned at least 1.5 millimeters from the adjacent natural tooth root. The minimum distance between two implants should be three millimeters at bone level. In addition, a vestibular and oral bone lamella of at least 1.5 millimeters should be present around the endosseous collar region of the implant to ensure sufficient blood supply to the peri-implant bone. The evaluation of soft tissue characteristics and planning of the implant insertion depth is a crucial part of preoperative planning. The three available collar heights of the Toman Medical Implant System cover a broad width of clinical situations and can be selected based on the available soft tissue and aesthetic needs. Dependent on the individual patient characteristics, it might be indicated to place the implant either supercrestally, epicrestally, or subcrestally. The cylindrical shape of element implants allows for interoperative flexibility. When planning the final implant depth, be aware that all vector drills are 0.5 millimeters longer than the actual insertion depth of the implant. Please note that the following demonstration represents the classical surgical procedure. Toman Medical also offers a pilot drilling solution and a fully guided surgery kit. You can find information on material on guided surgery solutions on the Toman Medical website. The simple design of the Toman Medical implant system reduces the number of instruments needed to a minimum. The arrangement of instruments in one of the available surgical cassettes further reduces the surgery time. 
The graphic insert of the cassette guides the user through the required surgical sequence for implant bed preparation. The cassette provides space for the Vecto drills arranged according to drilling sequence, depth gauges, profile drills, insertion tools, a drill extension, screwdrivers, and the mono torque ratchet. In addition, it contains a visual aid for drilling depth and space for instruments like a mucosa punch, insertion devices, or bone contouring instruments. Different instrument lengths are available to allow an adaptation to various anatomical situations. During the following drilling instruction, the subcrustal placement of an Element RC implant with a platform size 4 and an endosseous length of 11 millimeters is demonstrated as an example. On the cassette, the platform color indications for both the element and the contact implant lines guide the user to the necessary drilling diameter. For an element platform 4 implant, you will need to reach a drilling diameter of 3.5. You can also use the Drilling Protocol Overview Sheet for guidance. Start by using the VectaDrill Pilot Drill to accurately define the drilling axis and drilling depth. For a subcrestally placed implant with an endosseous length of 11 mm, you will have to drill to a depth of 12.5 mm to ensure enough space for the machined collar. Use the corresponding depth gauge to confirm the drilling depth. All Vecto drills feature a tapered tip that corresponds to the diameter of the preceding drill, thereby preventing slippage and ensuring a precisely shaped implant bed. Continue with sequential preparation using the Vecto drill twist drills until the desired diameter has been reached. While following the drilling protocol, please adhere to the recommended rotation speeds to avoid overheating and potential instrument fractures. Due to the varying design of element and contact implants, a corresponding profile drill for each implant line and platform diameter exists. Element implants only require profile drilling if the implant collar is placed subcrestally to ensure enough space for the prosthetic solution. Generally, the design of Element RC implants allows for a flexible insertion depth. Cone-shaped contact implants always require the use of a profile drill. Hence, continue by using the Element Platform 4 Profile Drill to ensure enough space for the subcrestally placed implant collar. For implants with an NSL surface, the first step of the implantation is the chair-side conditioning of the implant surface with the prepackaged AppliQuick system. First, activate the system by pressing the liquid-filled cartridge. Hold the applicator vertically with the cartridge upwards and shake vigorously at least five times to generate the superhydrophilic NSL surface. Continue by holding the AppliQuick horizontally and allow the conditioning liquid to flow into the integrated reservoir. After conditioning, remove the rubber cap on the rear of the applicator in the direction of the arrow. Ensure that the implant is entirely conditioned and wet. For mechanical implant insertion, use a handpiece adapter with a maximum rotation speed of 15 RPM. Press the lateral wings on the applicator together so that a gap in the implant holder opens. Carefully remove the implant from the implant holder. To ensure adequate access to the screw channel of angled abutments, it is mandatory to strictly align the implant to one of the position dots in a labial direction. Once the implant has been placed, take out the insertion aid in an axial direction. If there is a high insertion torque, a short counter movement will facilitate the removal. 
For manual implant insertion, screw in the implant with the mono insertion device to the point where the implant is seated firmly in the bone. Continue working with the mono torque ratchet. Screw in the implant with slow movements of the ratchet. Use the bending rod to display the exerted torque. If you wish to insert the healing cap, twist the cover of the Appliquit container and engage the healing cap with a mono screwdriver. Ensure that the interior of the implant is clean and free of blood to enable proper closure. Now screw in the healing cap by hand until it is in slight contact with the implant shoulder. For final tightening, use the torque ratchet with the indicated maximum torque of 10 newton centimeters. Other than the healing cap, Toman Medical also offers various types of gingiva formers and a wide range of temporary and final abutment solutions for restorative flexibility. Make sure you do not exceed the indicated torque values on the provided torque value chart when using the universal mono screwdriver. For implants with an NSL surface, it is recommended to have a healing phase of at least three weeks. At least eight weeks of healing are recommended in case of cancellous bone quality, implants with a length of 6.5 millimeters, or implants with an endosseous diameter of 3.5 millimeters. The healing phase further prolongs to a minimum of 12 weeks in case contact implants with a platform of 3.5 millimeters have been used. In situations in which the sandblasted and acid etched surface is not completely in contact with the bone or if bone augmentation measures are necessary, the healing phase needs to be adjusted accordingly. Please carefully consider the following restrictions of use for the presented implant system. Toman Medical does not recommend restorations with cantilevers. Additionally, restorations with angled abutments should not be used in regions with high mechanical stress. When placing an implant with a platform size of 3.5, areas with large bending moments should be avoided. It is further not permitted to use implants with a platform size of 3.5 in posterior areas for single tooth replacements of canine teeth and central incisors or for use with ball attachments. Element implants with a length of 6.5 millimeters are to be used exclusively as supplementary implants in conjunction with longer implants and as support for bar constructions for full dentures in the lower jaw. Lastly, Toman Medical implants are not indicated if intolerances to the corresponding materials exist. For further information, please refer to the surgical procedure instructions for use or contact your local Toman Medical Advisor.